In this video, seven common scams in Tulum. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen to you, but you should at least know what they are so you can be a smart traveler and know what to look for, as well as some safety tips so that you can just have a good time in Tulum coming up. This first one is counting your change, especially if you're on Tulum Beach Road. I had just visited the statue, went across the street because it was a million degrees outside. And the mosquitoes were biting me like they usually do. And I just wanted a water and I counted my change and realized, yo, senor, donde esta mi cambio? Where is my change? And he was like, mm, no tango. He didn't have it. And I was like, well, then I don't want this $4 water, by the way. And all of a sudden, he had the change. So make sure you be a smart traveler. Number seven, count your change. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is CL. This is one of so many Tulum travel videos. Make sure you check the full playlist as well as the description because there's blog posts and so much more. I've traveled to Tulum a lot. I feel like there's a new scam every time I go there. And so let's, let's talk about the next one. Number six is the, well, corrupt police. Let's just be honest about what the situation is. There's three key tips I want you to know. And if you're listening to this and you're like, well, what about the cartel? Uh, the cartel is more likely to just harm you, harm you, harm you, harm you or hurt you, harm you. But the police are more likely to scam you. So I'm just going to keep it on that topic. The first one is stopping you, especially if you're on a scooter, a moped or a motorcycle, they'll just set up barricades and they'll stop you for whatever reason that they want. And I'll just leave that to the exclusive content if you want that story. Beware of the barricades. The next one is just to know that they are everywhere, especially with some of the things that are not so safe happening in Tulum. There's a huge military presence. So just expect police, military, big guns, full armor, literally everywhere in Tulum to the point where there's new on ATVs, in trucks, like lots and lots of them everywhere on Tulum. And to be honest, it won't make you feel safer. At least it didn't for me. And the third thing that's helpful to know is anytime you're holding cash, I very rarely hold my cash in my purse or I guess my fanny pack. I keep cash in different amounts of them in different pockets. I am all about that pocket game when I'm in Tulum. I wear clothes with lots of pockets and lots of different belongings are in each of those pockets. Consider splitting up how you hold your money in case <sighs> scamming and corruption, two different things. Anyway, it's something helpful to know. This next tip is just the tip, literally. Let's talk about Propina. I, I was looking back at my receipts from 2020 versus this past year in 2024 and was like, wow, this is a new thing where before, you know, like gratuity, I would always tip, but it was normally like 10%, 15%. And now gratuity is automatically included on a lot of your bills, 15%, 20%. And it's just important to ask for your receipt. Make sure you know if it is or is not included because it's common for a waiter or waitress to tell you, ah, propina no es incluyo, which means that they're telling you that the tips are not included, that you should tip on top of it, but it might already be included. So be a smart traveler and ask to see your receipt before you add your additional gratuity if that's the right step for you. Oh, number four is about gas. Oh, there is something key you got to do when you're pumping gas. Actually, you don't pump gas. They pump gas for you. But if you're getting some value in this video, cheers that like button. Consider subscribing. Don't forget, just because I'm telling you about these common scams does not mean it will happen to you. It is good to be a smart traveler. Know what to be aware of. Know what's common and, and just keep an eye out for them. And if you have a helpful tip, add it in the comments below. We're all a community. These are just the ones that I've experienced or seen or have talked to people about, which makes me sad. And renting a car in Tulum is not something I recommend. You can read more in the description about why. And one of the things about renting a car is that you will eventually need to get gas. They will pump the gas for you. And there's a couple tips I have for you. One, if you're paying with card, make sure that you are watching them put the dollar amount or peso amount into the machine and it's correct on how much you're supposed to be paying. Make sure there's not an extra zero on there. The second thing, before they start pumping your gas, be right next to them watching. Make sure they zero out the amount before they start pumping. What, what do you mean? You don't want them to start from the, you know, 20, 30, 50 US dollars that the last person had just pumped and then yours goes on top of that. So make sure they're zeroing out the pump. And if you are paying with 
cash, make sure, like the first tip I gave you, that you're counting your change to make sure you've gotten it right. Being at the gas pump is not a time for small chatter and, and staring at your phone. Just be a smart traveler, know what to look for, and make sure you pay the right amount for your gas. The next one is that you can expect to pay the tourist tax. You're like, What's the tourist tax? That's pretty common in a lot of places around the world, which is the locals will pay one price and the tourists, us, we'll pay a whole other price that tends to be whatever they want it to be. So this could be anything from you're walking into a cenote, they're eyeing you, ah, the price for you is fill in the blank. Or for someone like me, I want to fly my drone, there's a posted sign about ask to see prices and the price of that day is $50. Oh, no, 100 US dollars today. It's just whatever they want. And so being aware of when you're walking into a place and you're about to pay to get into a cenote, buy something, fill in the blank, having an idea of what you think that should cost, you can do that by using Google, checking the Reddit forums, etc. Have an idea of what that price is supposed to be so you're not having to pay that tourist tax. The second most common scam in Tulum is around ATMs. And I have a couple tips for you here. First, a sketchy ATM is a sketchy ATM. I, I try to find ATMs that are associated with the bank that I use. So for example, I bank with Bank of America. And so a sister bank of Bank of America or a partner bank is Scotiabank, where I won't be paying fees. So I'll try to find a Scotiabank because not only is it associated with Bank of America, but it also gives it credibility. I also use the Charles Schwab card, one that I recommend because there's no ATM fees when you're abroad. And in those instances, am I going to use a little corner store ATM for that? Probably not. I'm going to try to find a more reputable looking one. Why? The second tip is to read the fine print. This is a newer thing for me in 2024, where I've started using ATMs around Tulum, Playa del Carmen, as well as when I was traveling in Holbosch Island. And when you read the screen on there, they might give you a different exchange rate than what is fair. And it makes using an ATM possibly not make that much sense. So make sure you're reading what the fine print says as you're going through the steps and have an idea of what the exchange rate should be that day when you're traveling in Tulum. We're gonna talk about the number one way in which just about everybody gets scammed in Tulum, as well as some helpful safety and smart traveler tips. But for taxis, you, you just gotta throw in the towel. It's gonna happen. You're gonna pay some amount that's totally not fair. And maybe that's a couple bucks or maybe that's a couple hundred bucks. It depends. Tell them to use the meter or tell them to use the posted price in the zones, right? Each zone has a different price or just call yourself an Uber. I'm just kidding. All three of those things don't exist especially the last one because the cartel has literally smashed every single car that tried to come in as uber that was years ago anyway taxis here's the first tip have an idea of what you think it should cost for the ride you're about to take no your hotel will not help you to negotiate it but you can still ask your hotel for example oh um, you know, Quanto Cuesta, how much does it cost for a taxi from here to the beach on average? And they'll, you know, they might give you, maybe they're in on the taxi scams, but they will give you a price so that when you go to negotiate, you might have that bargaining power. Or uh, I have in the exclusive content four different ways that I use to negotiate with the drivers, but having a sense of how much you think it should be is key before you try to go take a taxi. Oh yeah, and one other just smart traveler tip, I always do this one. When you have an idea of how much it should cost, that amount will go in one of your pockets so that when you see the taxi driver and they quote you at 10 times that price, you'll say, ah, I only have, and then you show them your actual cash on how much you think you should pay. Oftentimes that works extremely well. But Tulum is the jungle. So welcome to the jungle, especially when it comes to taxis. Let's talk about safety tips. I have four key safety tips for you that have helped me to stay safe in Tulum over the years of traveling there. The first one is making sure you have either a local SIM card or what I've started using recently, Aerolo, an e-SIM card. So in other words, you have data on your phone because I have found times in which I've downloaded the Google map in advance, 
I'm offline and I'm navigating, you know, on an e-bike through the, through the newer parts of Tulum and realize, oh wow, like this part is not on the map and I actually don't know how to get to what's next. And so turning on that e-SIM in those moments so that I can have service is really important. You are in the jungle. You will not necessarily have cellular service everywhere, but just being able to be connected when you need to be, you can't always rely on, ah, oh, when I get to the next place with Wi-Fi, you might be in a moment or in a pinch in which you need to have cellular service. And so having an eSIM card, super important. More info on that in the description below. The next thing just to keep an eye on is your belongings and namely when you're in restaurants. It's very common when you're dying in Tulum for the restaurant establishment just to let in primarily kids, the local kids, to try to sell you things. While they're trying to sell you a bracelet or some chicle or something, there might be a second child that's there. It's not just the kids, it could also be the adults. It could be anyone. It could be the dogs and the cats. I'm just letting you know, I have had friends who have had their, per and it doesn't even have to be your purse taken. It can be something taken out of your purse. So making sure you hold on to your belongings. And that leads to this next tip, which is I always wear cross body bags or fanny packs or just things that are on my person and that are fitted so I can always feel them. And so just being aware of your belongings is super key. Another thing to be aware of is how and where and when you walk. And so a lot of people are always like, ah, it was fine. Some areas in Tulum, you know, the streets were kind of dark. There were no lights, but it was totally safe. There was no problem. And it's like, it's, it's not necessarily the darkness in the roads that are unsafe. It's the cartel that's unsafe and staying away from that. And so staying on the main roads, and if you're walking after dark, yo, I hustle. I love staying out late, drinking by myself, going out, listening to live music, all the things. I will straight up run back to the place that I am staying. So watch your hustle. Make sure you keep a pace, especially if you're after dark and you're a woman traveling alone. Ooh, I do have a Tulum solo travel tips video. But this is also just not the time to have headphones in, listening to your nasty rap music, you know? I love nasty rap music. Being aware of how you walk and that pace and when you're walking, where you're walking, normal travel safety stuff. This last one is a question that I get asked a lot, which is be a smart traveler. Should you pay in dollars or pesos? Should you use a credit card or should you go get money out? These are the different ways I think about it. You can, of course, people love, who doesn't wanna take your money, right? People will absolutely allow you to pay in dollars. And in 2024, that is more so than ever. But what does that mean? It means two things. One, if you need change, they're gonna give you change in some kind of exchange rate that is not in your favor. So for example, if you have a $50 bill and you're paying for something that's $45, you're not gonna get five US dollars back. You're gonna get the equivalent of five US dollars in pesos in whatever exchange rate they're choosing to use. The other thing is that they are gonna convert your dollars to pesos. The price on the menu, unless it shows it in US dollars, which likely it does not, they're going to use an exchange rate that favors them and then you're gonna pay for it. So in the when should you use US dollars? If you have a really short trip, you do not want to hold any pesos at all, or you absolutely are traveling to places that don't take credit cards and you don't wanna have any pesos with you when you leave, you know, you can just round things out and just let them keep the change. That's a great time to use dollars. It's not a very smart traveler move, but you at least don't have to deal with having pesos during this scenario. So I always recommend exchanging your dollars for pesos. Where should you do this at? It should be at a reputable counter. So for example, going to a reputable bank, going inside, talking to a teller and actually having them exchange your dollars for you. If you see the counters on the street, just make sure you're looking at the rates, comparing it on your phone to what the rate should be and making sure they don't have any additional fees to be able to exchange your dollars. That's the way I go about it. You'll see counters all over the place. They'll all have different numbers in what the exchange rate will be 
you just got to find the one that feels right for you and as close to the actual exchange rate as possible. But should you be using your credit card or your ATM card? Absolutely. The way I think about this is as long as you have a smart traveler credit card where you're not being uh, you're not paying foreign transaction fees, for example, then this is a great time for you to use your credit card. You're going to get the best rate possible and you're not going to have to deal with all like the weird exchange rate stuff that other people will put on you. And so using your credit card anytime you can, if they accept it in general, Visa is accepted everywhere in Mexico. You got an Amex, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. It's not uncommon for them to charge a fee for you to use a credit card. So just keep an eye out for that as well. I've given you seven common scams to be a smart traveler and look out for, as well as a few safety tips. If you have a helpful tip, add it in the comments below or all the community. Don't forget, there's a blog post that goes along with this. So, you know, as you guys put in your info, I might be updating that blog post over there. I'm Christine Lozada. Be a smart traveler. Check the description. Don't forget about that eSIM card. There's a lot of helpful content in the description that a lot of people miss. I'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.